Welcome to Everyday Economics, the podcast helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, CEO of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network, and you can subscribe to all of our podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics, please make a tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We're recording this episode on Friday, August 16th, and joining me, as always, my friend and colleague, Orfei Divangi. He's a doctor and he's a PhD economist. Dr. O, we talk about, um, you know, things in the news that that kind of stick out. And we have a lot of choices uh, t- to make uh, about, you know, sort of what we take on. I, I just can't push past um, a Democrat uh, presidential candidate uh, Kamala Harris's um, thoughts on price controls. And um, I, I think, you know, for the benefit of our of, of our audience, I, I think it's like we really need to explain what this means, because I, the way that it's being presented um, and carried by, you know, some news media organizations is that price controls are uh, an equal opposite reaction and an appropriate reaction to price gouging. Which, you know, which is an allegation that, that's been made, uh, you know, uh, among larger companies and corporate greed. But let's talk specifically about price controls and, and, and what they are, what they serve to do. And, um, you know, I mean, I think to be objective, let's talk about where they've been implemented and whether or not they've worked, because it's not like price controls haven't been uh, utilized in other economies around the world. Man, it's a, it's a disaster. I mean, you had to just go to Venezuela. And uh, in Venezuela, the outcome was the shelves were empty uh, and people were starving. So that, that's, the, that's the outcome, right? Shortages. Do you remember at the start of COVID, uh, the right. COVID period where basically you had nothing on the shelves? Imagine having to live like that. Oh yeah, uh, right. And, and and it wasn't just Venezuela, right? It's it's every country that has tried this stuff. Uh, Argentina is one of them. Strategic price controls is what they call them. Uh, same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, prices go out of control. Prices right shortages, mass shortages because of uh, because of these limits on prices. Well, why does it happen? Uh, when, I mean, that, that's well, the, that's that's the because I mean, I think to the average, like to the average American, if you you know, if you say to them, you know, and they're not being terribly thoughtful, if it's presented in such a way that like this loaf of bread is going to be two dollars and that's it, it's going to be a two dollar loaf of bread from here on out. You're only going to pay two dollars for this loaf of bread. That sounds great, but what actually happens? You know, well, when well, when, I mean, a, when a price is controlled. Yeah, well, look, the economy is growing, right? And demand for goods and services continues to increase. And if prices are not able to adjust, uh, by the way, the cost of creating these goods and services also continues to increase. But if consumer prices are not able to adjust, then, uh, you know, businesses cannot continue to produce this stuff at a loss, essential. They just can't. So they stop. So they stop uh, making them. So, so they so stop, they stop making, making it. Is that is that's that, one is, way? That's that's okay. one mechanism. The other one is you just end up with less competition, fewer businesses entering the space because okay. uh, because basically they can't make a profit. They can't turn a profit, and they might right. actually lose money. And so uh, right. So it just doesn't work. Uh, in, in the case of housing, every time we've messed around people have messed around with rent control right rent controlled units oh what's yeah, actually happened right what's happening what's actually happened over time is renters are faced with fewer units to choose from and the quality of rent controlled units was actually worse right like the decline there's, there's no way those landlords can keep can continue to maintain these units the upkeep upkeep goes down, the quality goes down, but also the quantity of units available to renters goes down. And so you, when you have fewer rental units, who, who's, pay, who's paying the price? 
I mean, it's it's those people that are looking for homes, right, to to to, to rent, right, and so so you end up with these shortages, uh, the, and it's just mm-hmm. basic economics. I think everybody on the left and the right will agree, right, and and I only say this because I feel like every conversation I have with folks now is just like. You know, left ideology, right ideology, left ideology, right. And it's like, no, this is economics. It's these are just universal laws of economics that don't care what political party you, uh, you, you support. Right. And so whether it's, oh, by the way, price controls, we could talk about tariffs and subsidies and taxes in the same vein. It's all the same. These these measures that mm-hmm. distort markets end up costing us more in the long run, and so uh, so yeah, that's that. Those are my thoughts on this. You know, tariffs on foreign or on 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 goods. What, what do you think they're going to do, right? Uh, you know, you enjoy this wonderful thing called the iPhone, a computer in my pocket, right? And it's expensive, mm-hmm. but it's kind of cheap enough given how much stuff I can do with it, right? I can work from home. I can stay in bed. I can, I can record this podcast on my iPhone. I mean, it's amazing, right? Right. Now, can you imagine if the price of everything that goes into the iPhone goes up, and then, and then, and then the government says, "Apple, you can no longer charge whatever you're charging, and you cannot raise your prices either." Uh, well, you know what Apple's going to do? They're going to say, well, it's not worth it for us anymore. We, we can't do it. We can't pay our employees. We can't, mm-hmm. we can't produce more iPhones. So, like, like what's the point? Uh, and so the quantity of iPhones goes down, and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and then you end up with more people wanting an iPhone than there are iPhones available. Uh, and so it has the, you know, the unintended consequence of resulting in mass shortages um, everywhere. And then, by the way, in those countries, when you get rid of price controls, prices shoot they skyrocket. Right. You know, prices skyrocket uh, because then you got the price adjustment that has to take place. But ultimately, uh, over a longer period of time, right, you start to see more and more competition. You start to see more and more goods and services, right, coming back online. And that helps to bring back uh, that balance between supply. It just and takes so, that just takes so much time. I mean, and and you know, I I mean, it's like this is not necessarily a parallel, but you know, I mean, when COVID restrictions were occurring, you know, here specifically in Illinois, and it's a you know, I mean, it is a blue state. Um, when when they were placing restrictions on on businesses and and operations, see what and you whatnot, did there, Chris. You see what you did there. You you called it a blue state. See what you did there. It, it, but it is. I mean, uh, I mean, it's. I think it's. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind saying, of an important point. Of I think context, it's important right? for us. I think it's important for us to to look at policy for what it is and how it affects eco- the supply and demand for goods and services, and just try to forget the political stuff. It's hard to. It's well, hard. But to my do point that is. Yeah. My, but the, my point is, is that, you know, when when government gets involved at a at a at a level where they're tinkering around with, you know, with the economy, like literally like closing businesses uh, down or, or changing the way they're li- allowed to operate, it ultimately has a, a deleterious effect to the economy in the in the in the, in the uh, long term. That's uh, the only absolutely. point I'm trying to make. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, and another important point to make is that like all of these policies, these weird antiquated failed policies that are coming back around right in the news are only coming back around because somebody said oh inflation is where it's at because there was corporate greed and like these corporations just raised their prices and you know and, and took advantage and it's like hold on a second like Inflation's coming down right now. Are you trying to say that all of a sudden these corporations are, you know, choosing not to raise prices to infinity? Right. Like, right. Wh- wh- like, what would be the incentive for them to slow their the pace of price increases? All on their like they raise. If your theory is correct, they raise them 
And now all of a sudden they're like, ah, we're going to, we feel bad for the American people. It just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. The yeah. reality is the inflation mess we're in was due to a combination of supply chain challenges coupled with massive, massive stimulus. Right. <laughs> caused by the same right. government actors that today are basically saying, oh, we got to limit price increases. In fact, yeah, we got to get this that. under control now. I wrote about that back in 2021. You know, the policies, and by the way, both administrations guilty of the same thing. The policies, the COVID response, okay, to the pandemic, while necessary for those who lost their jobs. Right. The fact that people who didn't lose their jobs got checks right. in the mail. Oh, by the way. Yes. Everybody loves to have a check in the mail, okay? Yeah. But at the end of the day, the fact that everybody, including people, high income people who didn't have job loss, who didn't experience job loss during the pandemic, got checks in the mail from those administrations, right? The previous one and the current one, right? Played a massive role in why inflation peaked right. at 9% in 2022. And I'm not the only one saying that. I think a lot of people have uh, serious economists have talked about this. I remember Larry Summers yes. talking about trying to fill a, a pothole with a mountain of stimulus or some some analogy like that. Right. It was hilarious. That's right. Uh, but yeah, that's what happened. So to, 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 to now come up with like these populist uh, ideas that, oh, we can restrict prices and this, well, let's blame the corporations. That is just nonsense. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate your thoughts nonsense. as always. No, thank you. Oh, I mean, and I think that this is the kind of conversation that, you know, that, that like that needs, that needs to happen. And, uh, I, you know, I, I, I mean, there's no, there's no real mystery to, to why we are where we are. So that was good stuff. For Orfe Divangi, this has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other high quality podcasts at americastalking.com.